Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're going to be looking at Alpha Flight numbers 9 through 12. All right, I don't know what it is, but I feel like Alpha Flight is in the air. It seems like there's certain buzzing things happening with Alpha Flight. Um, John Byrne, creator of Alpha Flight, um, has just featured a page uh, with a couple of characters from Alpha Flight in his X-Men Elsewhen um, fan fiction on burnrobotics.com if you're not reading it. It's the best X-Men comic being not being published by Marvel Comics right now. It is so good. It has old school John Byrne art, plen plenty of like, uh, you know, like heroes from across the Marvel universe. It's so good and it's free under the fan fiction of burnrobotics.com. Anyway, he teased a page with a couple numbers from Alpha Flight. So it doesn't take much to stoke the, the flames of my Alpha Flight desire. Also, um, Marvel just came out, and this will be a separate video, but with a new Gamma Flight book, so that's sort of Alpha Flight related. And also Savage Dragon artist and creator uh, Eric Larson just released North Force, which is a blatant like Alpha Flight reference, and it's a group, his group of Canadian superheroes. Once again, another separate video for you to look forward to. Speaking of that, please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, it totally helps. I'm like so almost there at 500 subscribers, which is really exciting for me. I've been building this channel for almost a year now, or maybe a year, and uh, I've been working really hard, and I would love to just do this as my main thing, and you can help me make that happen. So without further ado, and that was much further ado than I had planned, but we're gonna go through, continue. I already did issue one through eight, so I'll leave links for those videos in the description if you wanna check it out if you haven't already. Alpha Flight is basically a team book. Uh, they were created as foils to the X-Men. John Byrne thinks of them as throwaway characters, uh, much to the fan base's chagrin, because we all love them. Um, it started out basically as a team book. I thought he did a really cool, like quirky stories, um, it definitely got a, a different sort of vibe than American comics, and it's supposed to be Canada's, Canada, Canada's premier superhero team, so I was glad that it had a different sort of feel and aesthetic. And John Burns, Canadian somehow. Um, I think he was born in England, but lived in Canada as a Ute. Anyway, so this is issue nine. Um, mostly a team book, but they usually only come together for like special events or if it's necessary. If somebody's dying or, you know, there's a big Canadian creature taking over the Northwest, whatever. Um, so then it would focus on their solo stories. And as you can see, we've already got this great cover. This is such a great tease cover and spoilers. Um, it, you think it's Sasquatch versus the thing on the cover. So from Fantastic Four and Byrne was also working on Fantastic Four at the time. So that made it especially exciting. I love the art um, on Alpha Flight. John Byrne mainly penciled and inked his own work. Some people aren't crazy about his inks, but I think most artists are better when they ink their own work. And this is uh, John Byrne's inspired, inspired by John Carpenter's The Thing movie, like one of the best movies of all time. So this is kind of fun and lends itself really well to it. So it's a Sasquatch story. He's a scientist. They're on this base out in the middle of the uh you know arctic or whatever and uh they teleport this thing in this thing see what i did there like so many different thing references happening the movie the thing the fantastic forest thing and just the fact that it's kind of a thing anyway oh here's an ad for the my marvel tryout book i have like two marvel tryout books um obviously uh it didn't launch my career in comic books but um stick around. Well, <laughs> something will launch my career in comics one day. Actually, I have a checkered uh, history in comics. I've done things here and there, but whatever. I don't know if it's worth the Google or not, but it's not like I'm just talking out of my ass here, which I kind of am talking out of my ass. So, oh dear Lord, here comes the thing teleported into the ship. We better get him inside. We love the thing. He's our friend. However, will we pick him up? If only I could turn into a giant orange Sasquatch and pick him up. I mean, how cool is that? I love that um, it gives you a good indication on like the size ratio.
Because it's funny, because I think a misconception I always had about Thing when I was younger is that he was, like, just huge. And he's encased in rock, but other than that, I think he's supposed to be pretty much the size of a normal man. Like, I don't think it is being gamma uh, or cosmic radiation um, that gave him the FF their powers. I don't think it necessarily made him larger, per se. But I love the way John Byrne draws the Sasquatch. Um, of course, he created all these great characters. Fun handlebar mustache. It's always fun to see John Byrne. This is part of what makes John Byrne such a great artist. Is like He just puts in the work and does the backgrounds, draws every book on the bookshelf. I mean, there's things on the desk. It just looks realistic, believable, and lived in. You know, when you're a comic book storyteller, you're basically the director, the cinema photographer, you're handling all that. So it's not just enough to draw pretty pictures, which is definitely a big part of it. But, you know, there's storytelling, there's, you know, who are these people? Where are they? What are they doing? One of the rules of thumb is you should be able to look at a comic book page and tell kind of what's going on without reading it, which proves what a visual medium storytelling is. I think it's funny that, you know, there's been a debate over the years over what's more important, the writer or the artist. And I mean, I think ideally, like uh, you get someone like John Byrne who's writing stories because a lot of times when you're interpreting somebody else's script, um, it's difficult um, to read each other's minds and put exactly in. It's so funny, um, the bright garish cover colors because they had such limited colors and bad, um, you know, printing back in the day. I mean, you're in like the middle of the Arctic and you're running around in like these fuchsia and pink sweaters. And I just think that's kind of funny. Once again, limited color palette. But I have to say, uh, I love the old school coloring, like the flat, it's not overly rendered. It's not airbrushed, it's not whatever. And then we discover that it's not really the thing. Who could it possibly be? Well, of course we all know who it is. It's the ad for Mile High Comics. It's the Super Scroll. How cool is that? I love John Byrne's FF and just like the Super Scroll is so cool because he's the scroll who has all the powers of the FF. And that was such a great ingenious plot device. Like another really clever uh, scroll story is FF Annual 17. You guys know what I'm talking about. The scroll scrolls, the cows in the small town whatever. Hopefully I'll cover that one day because that is like one of the best Fantastic Four stories ever. So also in addition to being a little bit different in format as far as splitting up the team and really only featuring them together for stories uh, that deem necessary. You know, it's like the X-Men all live together in the mansion, so they couldn't help but interact with each other. And uh, Alpha Flight came together when it was a good reason. But it also gave Byrne the opportunity to do um, some backup stories with a little bit of the origin of the other members. And this is Aurora. Um, it's funny because someone had asked recently in some Facebook group about uh, characters who discovered their powers while, you know, in the midst of like uh, attempting to take their life or something like that. And Aurora Jean Marie. Split personality, brought up by nuns, separated from her twin brother, North Star. They grew up separately, both mutants. So she's jumping off the uh, top of the Catholic school that she was raised by nuns. And lo and behold, a miracle. She can fly. I have to say that's such a great way to discover, like, the psychology of that. Like, you're going from ending your life to discovering you can fly. I mean, there's a lot of psychological ramifications to that. So anyway, John Byrne um, kind of fleshed out the characters, I guess, more um, as the story went along. I read in an interview, like, they were talking about North Star being gay, and he said that he wanted to make a character gay just to sort of, I don't know, throw that in there and, you know, make all the characters different and... Um, he eliminated the other ones and said it was kind of obvious for uh, Jean Paul to be gay. And even though he hadn't planned it, the subtext was kind of already there anyway. So, which always brings me to the adage of characters and books and stories just 
kind of writing themselves. And if you've written anything, you kind of know what that means. Sometimes the characters in the stories just get away with you and they manifest themselves how they need to happen. Um, great shot of Aurora. I must have tried to draw that picture a million times. I love Aurora. I love North Star. They're like my absolute favorites. I love Alpha Flight. I would love to see this in those one of those artist editions from IDW that does those amazing oversized black and white books that are uh, printed right from the artist's art. So you get to see like all the art and all its glory. And of course we get Wolverine tied into Aurora's um, uh, origin. So John is supposed to be visiting um, uh, Wolverine's origin in the pages of X-Men and Elseone. And since he is tied to Weapon Alpha in Canada, I hope to God that means a lot of uh, Alpha flight. Much to his chagrin, who gives a crap? Give me what I want. John Byrne hates everything he works on anyway. He becomes disillusioned and dumps it and walks away. And uh, it just doesn't matter to me. It just does not matter. I love his stuff. I love Alpha Flight. Bring it on. Give it to me. Give me John Byrne all day, all long. All, all day long. <laughs> Great ad for Secret Wars. It's so funny because uh, how Mike Zack was the artist for that. And he's done such great work on like Captain America and the Punisher and stuff. So it's kind of fun to see him draw like a big superhero team book. Here's a great ad for Marvel when you could mail 40 cents to 2 cents a copy to mail away. Subscriptions were a great idea. I mean, if they should do that now. If you could just order directly from the Marvel and have them sent to your house at a discounted price. I mean, everyone's ordering on Amazon and eBay anyway, so I don't understand why they don't do this. Um, I don't know. The comic industry likes to shoot itself in the foot. Here is an ad for a Masters of the Universe Power of He-Man video game, which looks god-awful. Look at those graphics. But have you seen the preview for the new He-Man coming to Netflix? I think they're finally listening to fans. I think they're finally doing it right. I'm super excited for it. It looks great. All the characters look great. They look like they're supposed to. Adam goes from puny to, like, muscular when he becomes He-Man. Makes perfect sense. I'm going to reserve judgment on that until I watch the actual show. But, you know, my suspension of disbelief is there enough to have Adam be muscular as well as being He-Man, so whatever. Anyway, such a great character cover here. Um, more pink. A lot of covers had, like, bright pinks and yellows in order to uh, stand out on the newsstand. You know, it's funny, newsstands, uh, comic books used to be at, like, 7-Eleven or the drugstore or whatever, and they'd put them in those spinner racks. So really... Unless you were the bottom comic, you could only see the the title. So it was smart to use bright colors and also very smart thinking of it. Um, I wonder if that was an influence on Marvel Comics, you know, to do these little corner boxes that they're so famous for. Because that way, not only does it give you more art, but it gives you some art along with, next to the title. So if you're just seeing the top of the book, then you're like, heck yeah, man. Anyway, continuing in this John Carpenter-inspired thing story featuring Sasquatch and um, uh, Super Scroll. So this is clearly John Byrne. Um, oh, look, you can see the Twin Towers there. It's always uh, such a, like, <clears throat> takes you right back when you see that. Um, anyway, this looks like some Xerox photocopy art that was... Uh, a technique that they used back in the day. I think you can still utilize it to some effect, but you don't really need it with all the computer effects going on. But I always said it was fun when they did things like that. Byrne did a lot of them. Uh, best comic costume ever. Like, I don't even know why you would uh, mess with that at all. Like, don't ever change that. Like, Guardian got such a short end of the stick. You know, um, he should be Canada's Captain Marvel, or not Captain Marvel, Captain America. <sighs> anyway, great splash page of the Super Scroll. This is so much fun. I love the art on this. It looks so good. Rita, I love old school comic books because, uh, you know, they weren't, um, I feel like the, the main focus of comics these days, even the monthlies, is that you're writing 
for it to be uh, collected in a four to six issue trade paperback. So um, the story just flows a little more like, you know, when you're doing a monthly comic, you need to do a lot of recaps. And one of the things that they used to do was doing the flashback sequences, not in color, like using a monochromatic type of theme like that. But, you know, one of the many tricks of the trade that I love to point out, you know, comics is such a visual medium and they've gotten away from certain things in comics that I feel are things that just make them special. So I sort of lean hard into the old schoolness of certain things like captions. A lot of comics don't have captions or thought balloons. I think they're trying to be more cinematic or whatever. But that's the beauty of comic books is you're not limited to the trappings of film or you know making a movie so i say just freaking go for it bring me captions on the cover thought balloons captions flashbacks whatever i mean really like how cool is that like i just i love when john byrne does like artistic things he's such a like uh competent like sort of i don't know like just almost like a machine when it comes to art just because he does like his perfect like you know burn perspective and uh composition and all the stuff like he just is really competent at storytelling everything's always clear his anatomy always reads well just things like that so i love like seeing little things that are like a little artistic in a way just like the way that the sasquatch's hands are sort of highlighted by the flames of Super Scrolls. Uh, utilization of his human torch powers. I just think that's fun. I mean, he draws just such a cool looking Sasquatch. Like, I don't know. I just love the design of all the Alpha Flight characters. Can you believe you could get a ventriloquist dummy for only $2.98? It'd be so much fun to like, uh, I don't know. This could be a Twilight Zone movie or something where you read a comic book and everything in it, you can access the past just by mailing away for this stuff. That was just said for my own enjoyment, apparently. I don't know, John Byrne just drew great scrolls and then we get Galactus. Ooh, and Miss Marvel, I love it. That's. John Byrne is never shy about like putting cameos or references to, you know, that's, I think that is kind of the fun thing of the shared Marvel universe is like, you really do never know who's going to show up or whatever. Great effect there. Perfect example of John Byrne doing something a little artistic and outside of the realm of, uh, you know, your typical comic book action. Great shots of Aurora. I think they were just fight. He was just fighting with her, uh, Jean Marie, Jeanne Marie persona, whatever. My French was a little off. You should hear my Spanish. It's hysterical. And we continue the Aurora origin story. I always love this shot of Jean Paul. Um, the twins are great. I think it's fun that, I don't know, he gave them little flourishes, like the pointy ears and the slightly impish faces. Not to turn them into elves like Bill Mantlo did, which Bill Mantlo, as much as I like him as a writer, just did so many horrible things to Alpha Flight. I just think it, they would have been so much better off if they just ended with issue 28. Love this uh, precursor here because uh, this is like the first time they're meeting and one of the twins powers before um, she had Walter Lankowski uh, genetically alter her powers is that when they touch, um, it creates a burst of light. So that's kind of interesting. Thank God mutant powers don't manifest themselves until you're like in your um, teens because that would have made a big mess in the uh, the delivery room. I had Aurora and uh, North Star touched on the way out. A, eh? see my Canadian accent there? I can do all kinds of accents. <laughs> Alpha Flight, number 11. To save the life of the woman he loves, he must face them. I feel like this is Alpha Flight just really getting good. This is building up to the big death issue. Here we have Roger Box, who became Box. I said 
a little corny, but still kind of fun in a way that like, you know, like a, he becomes Box. So it's like his last name is Box spelled differently. And like, so just a little punny comic book kind of things. But look at all of this, like you've got all these books on this bookshelf. I mean, not only is there a curtain, but it has a pattern on it. For this page is for anyone who says John Byrne doesn't draw backgrounds because I feel after and discussing it with a few people, it's like, I feel like he finds a nice mix of backgrounds. You're penciling, writing and inking basically two monthly comic books. You need to pick and choose when you're gonna throw in your um, time to do a, a bunch of backgrounds. And I mean, pretty much everything is solid. Heather Hudson, um, great character, did not like her, like, putting on the Vindicator outfit and joining the team as the leader. I don't know. Um, I, in my mind, there's so many else, oh, my, my Alpha Flight else one is, like, loaded. It could go for years. And, you know, if I were rich and retired, or retirement age like John Byrne, I would just do Alpha Flight fan fiction and say, screw it, just to make myself happy for the rest of my life. So this is fun. It's weird because this Delphine Courtney character, who, um, you know, is ultimately responsible for uh, the murder of Guardian and sort of uh, taking all these, like, uh, we got to see a glimpse of Beta Flight and uh, Gamma Flight and like Omega Flight members I think and apparently they were just a bunch of hoods and crooks because it didn't take much to recruit them into a team to turn on Alpha Blades so I'm sure they had their reasons Power Pack I love that book that was a lot of fun not super into like books that are that kiddie but I really felt like I mean Louise Simonson is great writer june bridgman was great on the art and it was a lot of fun so what are you gonna do it's funny it burn is using a lot of uh like uh photocopy effects here and then we have him confronting omega flight the newly formed bad guys who are gonna take guardian down diamond lil um so many fun characters, Wild Child, Smart Alec, and uh, Flashback. There's like, the potential for fun comic books is just limitless. So now we get like this uh, Sasquatch backup story, Walter Lankowski. I always thought he was kind of like a hot science nerd, you know, like he's this blonde, you know, just boring white dude, but he's also the scientist with the killer body. I mean, John Byrne just draws uh, attractive looking people, male and female. But like I said, he always mixes it up with like the realistic sort of off kilter supporting cast. There's a lot of fun stuff going in here. I'm guessing this is more like Xerox work, but I love this x-ray effect. And this is pretty much giving me like vibes from the Incredible Hulk TV show which very well could have been an influence on this uh, Sasquatch origin. Um, he doused himself with some sort of, I think it was gamma radiation, but so much fun. Just John Byrne cutting loose and being like super artistic. I just, the sort of tension that he builds in his storytelling is incomparable. Love the use of these different, See, this is something that you don't see a whole lot in uh, modern comic book art. Modern comic book art is just look looks so flat and boring to me. Like, it's the acting and the exaggeration and, you know, like, I feel like if a modern comic artist draws, like, a similar page, he, he's just not as extended or dynamic in his pose as some of this old school stuff. And that's why... You don't know anyone's name anymore. It's like there isn't any, I mean, I'm sure there are, you know, people who are just fine artists, but I don't know. They all just kind of look flat and boring to me. And they have so much more at their disposal, you know, as far as uh, computer techniques and stuff like that. So, but I think the real raw talent 
So next issue is the double size issue. And not only is John Byrne doing like two books a month, but he's throwing in like number one was a double size issue. Number 12 is a double size issue. Number 24 is it? I mean, he's a madman. So as limited as his, our exposure to John Byrne's Alpha Flight seems, it's an ample amount considering, uh, you know, he gave us a lot of content. So this is a famous cover that's been done a million times before. Did it myself. Um, I don't remember, see this is like way before spoilers in the internet, so we had no idea who was going to die. And of course we would have known like a month before it came out in today's climate because they can't keep a damn secret. And I have to say that uh, the internet has ruined a lot of things uh, like with spoilers and just h half the time we didn't even know what the cover was going to look like coming out. So it was just kind of fun to show up at the comic book store on a Wednesday and just know that Alpha Flight was coming out that week, but not necessarily knowing what the cover was or what was going to happen. It's so funny. Another dynamic splash page of uh, John Byrne's interior design work. I love this very modern looking apartment, very stark white with the zebra print carpet. You've got Delphine Courtney with her typical John Byrne 80s uh, asymmetrical hairdo on a woman. Some if that if there are John Byrne tropes, that is definitely one of them, for sure. And we love every single one of them. But anyway, so she's kind of duking it out with Delphine Courtney and trying to figure out what's going on. This is leading up to the big battle of of Mega Flay and one of the team members dying. And then Heather tries to leave, and she's like, "Hell no!" And this chick just like throws her across the room with rudeness. It's so funny because she's just a normal woman. Like, would she not have, like, I don't know, broken her collarbone or something like that? No, because she is so tough that she's feisty. She's not taking this crap. You're not fighting me. And I'm going to rip off your freaking face. I love John Byrne's silhouettes. Snowbird and Shaman. Like, two more great creations. Shaman had this odd fixation with Snowbird. He just, like, uh, put her before his daughter and just, like, I don't know. Maybe it was sort of like a, a reverence. Or maybe he just had a blonde fetish. Who knows? Whatever. This is funny. And this is always, like, John Byrne thinking, too. Like, he, uh, Aurora is going to fly them somewhere. So uh, Sasquatch has to put on this protective suit to protect him from the elements. And she's super fast, so she just changes costume in the blink of an eye. And that's what I'm saying, like, the fun stuff of, you know, old school comic book storytelling. Like, there's just visual shorthand and just little tricks you can do to put stuff in there. Puck, he's always been a favorite. I like his character. He seemed really into being uh, a member of Alpha Flight and... Um, He's just a fun character. Great design. Um, here comes Puck and North Star. It's funny, North Star has such a crappy disposition and just, like, so rude to everybody. Nobody does, like, a rude uppity man better than uh, John Byrne. Speaking of which, Namor, same exact crap personality, Quicksilver, all cut from the same cloth, jerks, but we love him, right? And it's so funny, they were separated their entire lives, and once reunited, all North Star and Aurora could do is fight and complain and bitch to each other and just, like, cause problems. But it's I love that the team is getting forget together for a specific reason. That's also kind of, like, the fun thing about Alpha Flight is, like, I felt like there wasn't a lot of love lost between the team members. I mean... They sort of got along, but they spent a lot of time fighting, criticizing each other, and just, like, not having it. I love, this is fun, too. I just love, like, a big, strong character, like how Sasquatch, and <laughs> it's funny because uh, John Byrne is forever burned. Um, there's a scene at towards the end of his run in Uncanny X-Men where Colossus uproots a tree stump, and... Uh, 
you know, he's Colossus, he can lift tons, so he does it with no problem. And Chris Claremont uh, put in the captions, like, what a struggle it was for him. So that was the impetus for Vern leaving, saying, I'm sick of the dialogue never matching what I draw. He always goes against what, you know, I'm drawing. It doesn't match up. It doesn't make sense. I'm out of here. Which is fine, because they, lightning in a bottle, it was amazing. But how long could that have possibly gone on? I mean, it seemed pretty contentious. But, hey, we got gold out of it with the Dark Phoenix saga and uh, Days of Future Past. I mean, the debut of Alpha Flight. Who's complaining? It's really funny how much time they're spent fighting each other before they have to go fight another team. I don't know if I ever noticed that before, but I kind of love that. That, like, kind of makes them different. Such a great double page spread here showing off that fantastic costume design of Guardian that we love so much. Um, and it's weird because, okay, so he's fighting Gamma Flight, but I guess it's a false pretense or something. I don't know. But anyway, he seems like he's holding his own pretty well. But here comes... This has always annoyed me about Aurora. It feels like the minute she gets into battle, she's immediately taken out. Like, a uh, wild child just, like, slashes her ugly little creep. And so she's down and out for the count. And great shot of Snowbird there. This is so cool. This is, like, a fun thing. And I feel like he kind of revisited the, like, you know, a lot of... Uh, burn tropes or themes kind of run through so she's diamond well um indestructible diamond skin so she takes off one of her hairs which is supposedly indestructible too to use it to strangle snowbird i mean that's kind of cool like who thinks of stuff like that right and then now she's getting old by the great spirit And here we have Box. I love Box. I think he's such a great design. I love that Sasquatch took over Box's body when he lost his body. And Smart Alec looks into Shaman's uh, Mary Poppins purse and loses his mind because no mortal can look into the face of that and handle that crap. And Box just picking up Sasquatch like a, a throw toy and spinning him around. And there's Wild Child. Obviously, he hasn't had enough, but here comes overprotective brother North Star, and he's just going to slam Wild Child into a wall, which I love. Now, this, I love this because uh, last we saw Delphine and Heather, like she's ripping off Heather's face, and she's like, damn it, you ruined my disguise, so I'm just going to go ahead and rip off the rest of my skin. So, on the other side of that, her boobies are just hanging in the wind. Um, I want, I, now, John Byrne famously will not do Alpha Flight commissions, but I bet you, I bet you if I came up to him and I said, can we get, like, the the rear view of those weird rubber boobs hanging in the wind? He would probably be on that, like, Johnny on the spot, I'm telling you. Here's some fun things that you could order. I remember some of these. Uh, I had that Alpha Flight t-shirt. I had that X-Men t-shirt. I was such a geek. I mean, it's so weird to see everyone walk around with uh, comic book shirts and how popular comic books are because, like, uh, as much as I loved them, there was a certain amount of shame that you faced wearing, like, comic book t-shirts and stuff because you were branded as a geek or a nerd. Oh, well. I guess it was uh, appropriate. But they had these patches, I had these pennants. I had the Alpha Flight pennant, of course. And I'm sure I had the X-Men one because it has Storm on it. Like, all-time favorite comic book character. I'm surprised she's not a twin. There's some beautiful hatch work here and, and uh, John's inking. I don't know. I just love uh, Box. He has such a great face. It's interesting because John Byrne definitely does have a type when it comes to uh, designing, like, these big, strong characters they sort of have like shorter legs and bigger like upper torsos and i don't know it's just aesthetically appealing for some reason and see it's like he really went down to it it's funny how um characters usually become their most interesting right before they die some fun effects here with him being electrocuted 
Delphine Courtney, of course she's a robot. I have this uh, secret theory that John Byrne is actually a robot in disguise and um, I should do a separate video on it because it comes up a lot in his work, even his uh, forum, Burn Robotics. I mean, give me a break. So here is um, Guardian trying to get out of his, um, that's also a great like uh, tragic character moment when your own invention or your own device or whatever winds up being the depth of you. So this is also short circuiting and crap. I mean, okay, so if there could be an improvement on the Guardian design, James McDonald Hudson, what would it be? Velcro. Because then you could just tear that crap off, and then you get this big dramatic countdown. I can't pass this Bill Sienkiewicz ad without saying I love Bill Sienkiewicz's art so much. So much fun, Power Man and Iron Fist. Anyway, the big dramatic countdown to him successfully uh, not exploding in his costume. And then suddenly your wife walks in at the most inappropriate moment, and you wind up exploding and dying. I mean... <sighs> really. So it was pretty devastating that Mac died. I mean, it got rid of the most cool costume in comic book history, and that was sad. So that was another um, look, revisit into the early days of Alpha Flight 9 through 12, culminating in the death of Guardian. How sad are we? Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.